everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here. We are back in After Effects for some undead dripping blood. This project truly has no heartbeat. There are no keyframes, no expressions, just a bunch of layers and effects, yet it bleeds. Once this is set up, we can swap out the source, turn anything into dripping blood. It's got a nice clean alpha channel. It's a fun one to build, a couple things to be learned. If you're short on time, the finished project file is of course available to Texture Labs Patreon supporters with a couple spooky alternate versions that are kind of cool. But right now, let's get into After Effects and shed some blood. All right, I am here in After Effects and I'm going to be working in HD resolution, 24 frames per second. And this is the jumping off point, a piece of text in black, but this could be really any black shape on a transparent background. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start off by right clicking and pre-composing this text layer. I'll call this pre-comp source. And that way we can always switch out the source of what's generating the effect. So overview of the whole project, I'm going to break this up into three sections. So part one is going to be creating kind of this drips field. Part two is going to be combining the source shape with the drips. And part three is going to be to give it this glossy reflectiveness. So we'll start off by creating these droplets. And I'm going to do this in a separate composition. So I'll create a new comp and call it Particle World. And of course, that's going to give you a huge clue into how this will be created. I'm going to use the Particle World effect to just repeat a ton of tiny droplets. So the one thing we need in here first is just a single droplet that we can use kind of as a sample. So what I'll do is create a new solid called Drip, and it's going to be 40 pixels wide by 400 pixels tall, and it's going to be a black solid. OK, then I'm going to hit Q a few times until I get the Circle Mask tool and create a circle mask at the very bottom of this solid. If I double click the solid, actually, it's a little bit easier to see what's going on with the mask. So I want the circle to be not the full width of the rectangle, but maybe like three quarters the width of it. Then I'm going to hit F for feather and feather out this mask to 10 pixels. Then I'm going to hit Q a few times again to get back to the rectangular mask and draw one more mask in here. This one's going to be maybe half the width of the circle and go right all the way up to the top of the solid. And I'm also going to feather this out to 10 pixels. So the solid should look something like this. Then I'm going to apply one effect to this solid drip layer as well, the linear wipe effect. And I'm going to set the transition angle to 180, bring the completion right to 50% and feather it out also. So the solid is 400 pixels high. I'm going to feather this to be 380. So it basically gives us a nice even fade from bottom to top. So that is the drip solid. And I'm actually just going to end up sampling this layer. So I'm going to turn its visibility off. Then I'm going to create a new solid, make this one the full comp size, and this will be the particle world solid. So I'll give it the particle world effect. And I don't want to get too into the weeds on this effect. I would highly recommend Jake's video on the Jake in Motion channel if you want a full overview of the effect. I've come back to that video quite a few times myself. In this video, I'm just going to run through the settings on this effect. So from the top, the birth rate, that's how frequently the particles are generated, is going to be one. Longevity, how long the particles live for, is going to be four. Producer, that's the source point of the particles. I'm just going to bring the position Y to negative 0.12. That negative value raises it up just a little bit. Then radius, how big the source is. Radius X will be one. Radius Y is going to be 0.2. And radius Z will be zero. In the physics section, velocity is going to be zero and gravity will be 0.1. So a little bit of gravity is just the only force acting on these particles. In the particle section, this is where we can sample that drips solid. So particle type will be textured square. And then under texture, the texture layer is going to point at the drip layer that we just created, being sure to set it to effects and masks to pick up the drip masks and the linear wipe effect on there. Birth size will be 1.5 and death size at 2. That makes the particles grow just a little bit bigger as they go. Then I'll set the max opacity to 100%. And finally, all the way down here at the bottom in extras, there's a setting called hold particle release. I'm going to set that to 10%. And that makes the drips kind of just hang for a second before gravity takes over. So the effect looks something like this, and it does take a little bit for those initial particles to get generated. So what I'll do is hit the Y key, and that functions kind of like a slip tool in the timeline. If I drag this layer to the left with this tool, it basically makes the particles start somewhere way back over here so that they're already rolling by the time the composition starts. 
Okay, one more thing I'm gonna do in this comp, I'm gonna drag the source pre-comp in on top and I wanna use it kind of like a mask. What I want is to mask this shape. So what I'll do is use the mini max effect. I'll set the channel to alpha and color and then switch it over to just vertical and I'm gonna bring the maximum radius up to 500. Then I need another effect, the offset effect, to push this whole shape back down. So to compensate for the 500 in the mini max effect, I need to add 500 to the Y value in the offset. So the offset's gonna be 960 and 1040. Then let's give this layer just a little bit of Gaussian blur. I'll bring the blur up to 20. And finally, I'm gonna set the layer to stencil alpha so it acts like a mask on top and our particle world composition is ready to go, which brings us to phase two of the project where we'll blend the source shape with the particle world drips, and the goal is to create something like this. So back in my main comp, I've already got the source in here, and I'm also gonna drag in the particle world comp. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just add one effect to the source layer. And what I want is a single direction blur. I just wanna blur it downward. So for that, I can use the vector blur effect. It's not an easy effect to find, but if I switch it over to direction fading, we can create this single directional blur, and I'm gonna bring the amount all the way up to the maximum, which is 500. Then what we wanna do is blend these two elements together, right? The source and the particle world. And I'm actually gonna turn both of these layers visibility off and I'm gonna blend them together on a new solid. So it's gonna be a solid black and I'm gonna call this one drips composite. And the way I'll do this is using the calculations effect. And I should mention, I'm gonna use calculations quite a few times in this project. It's a simple compositing effect that allows you to reference and sort of make copies of different layers. And I think it makes a really useful alternative to creating pre-comps. I'll try to demonstrate what I mean. So in calculations, I'm gonna take the second layer and point it at the source layer. I'll bring the second layer opacity up to 100 and set the blending mode to silhouette alpha. Then I'm gonna give it a Gaussian blur and I'll bring that up to 100. Then another instance of calculations, exact same thing, I'm gonna point it at the source layer and bring the second layer opacity up to 100, but this time I'm gonna turn off preserve transparency and on this one set the blending mode to stencil alpha. So we're getting kind of this inner shadowy version of the source layer. And of course, this is something I could have done in a separate composition. We can imagine what that would have looked like. It would have been a black solid with the source on top set to silhouette alpha, then an adjustment layer with the Gaussian blur, and then another source set to stencil alpha. So when I'm building a project, I generally ask myself, is there a reason I need to pre-comp something and basically isolate it from my primary composition? Because if not, it's generally kind of nice to have access to everything in one place. Now, because I left these references set to source, not using effects and masks, they're referencing this layer without including the vector blur effect. But I also wanna mix in a little bit of the source with the vector blur effect. So to do that, I'm gonna use the calculations effect again. And with this one, I can point the second layer to source with effects and masks. And I'll bring the opacity on this one just up to 50%. And here I need to turn off preserve transparency. And that basically allows it to add pixels in on top of the transparent areas. Okay, next up, I wanna give this whole thing a little bit more of that motion blur effect. So I'm gonna use the vector blur effect again, and same thing, I'll set it to direction fading, but here the amount's just gonna be 75. All right, then let's mix the particle world drips in here. So I'm gonna use calculations again, and here point the second layer at the particle world layer. I'm gonna bring the opacity on this one to just 50% and turn off preserve transparency. All right, so we've got this kind of blurry, blended together version of the source and the drips. Then I'm gonna crush it all together using the CC threshold effect. And the nice thing about CC threshold rather than regular threshold is that you can set it to use the alpha channel. I'll take the threshold down just a little bit to 110, and this threshold basically shrink wraps everything into being just completely opaque or completely transparent. Okay, one last effect on this layer. It's gonna be the displacement map effect. I'm gonna point the displacement map at the source layer and I'll take the horizontal to 10 and the vertical to negative 10. That's gonna help the drips kind of react to those shapes and it's also gonna to help to create a little bit of this beveled highlight as we go.
Okay, so this has left the solid body of the letters transparent and given us just the shape of the drips kind of wrapping around the letters and dripping down, right? And I actually wanna leave this layer just as it is. Having the shape of the liquid by itself, it's gonna be really useful when it comes to creating that glossy treatment in just a minute. So believe it or not, I'm actually gonna turn this layer off too. This is gonna be the last layer that's gonna be invisible. And we're gonna wrap up the second phase of this project with a little bit more calculations effect. Remember, this is the goal here. So I'll create a new solid and I'll call this one body. It could be any color, I'll just make it bright blue. And then here, calculations effect, I'm gonna point it to the source layer, second layer opacity up at 100, and I'm gonna set this one to stencil alpha. So it's using that source layer as a mask. Then another calculations effect, and this one to get a copy of the drips composite layer. So I'll point the second layer drop down at the drips composite, and here I need effects and masks, second layer opacity up at 100%, and preserve transparency turned off. And that's kind of cool. We can really start to see how those layers interact. Because there's a threshold involved, it's a little bit crunchy. So I'm just gonna use the rough and edges effect to smooth it all out a little bit. The only thing I'll do in rough and edges is bring the fractal influence down from one to 0.5 and just make it a little bit less bumpy. Finally, I'm gonna use the fill effect, and this is where we can give it that nice red color for the blood. I'm gonna leave it red, but maybe not that full blast brightness red. I'll bring the brightness down to 60%. All right, well that wraps up part two. It's actually a pretty cool effect right here, but in part three, we're gonna give it all that beautiful liquid detail. So the first thing I'm gonna do is right here on this body layer, I'm gonna use a layer style effect, the satin effect. Layer style effects don't tend to get a whole lot of use in After Effects, especially not the satin effect, but it's starting to give us a little bit of this beveled look. All I'm gonna do is change the angle on the effect to 45 degrees. Then next, I wanna use another layer style effect, kind of the mother of layer style effects, the bevel and emboss effect. But we can get a whole lot of mileage out of bevel and emboss if I actually create a specific layer just for the bevel and emboss. So I'm gonna create a new solid and I'll call it bevel. And I want this solid layer to be black. And for the moment, I'm just gonna solo this layer out so we can see it a little bit more clearly. So let's start to define the shape of this layer. Surprise, surprise, it's the calculations effect again. I'm gonna point it at the source layer, bring the opacity up here just to 50%, and I'll set it to copy. So we get this transparent-ish copy of the source. Then look out, it's the calculations effect again, but this one, the second layer will point at the drips composite layer with effects and masks. This time, second layer opacity all the way up at 100% and preserve transparency turned off. Then I'm gonna blur this with a Gaussian blur set to 20, and it's all this semi-transparency and blurriness that's gonna give us a cool effect out of bevel and emboss. In fact, before applying bevel and emboss, I'm gonna apply one more effect to give us a little bit more fading transparency. It's gonna be the linear wipe effect. I'll take the wipe angle to be just off center at 175 degrees, bring the completion up to about 30%, and take the feather up to 300. So let's take that and go to layers, layer styles, and apply bevel and emboss. Of course, you can push around this layer style effect, but to try to keep this short, I'm just gonna run through these settings. I'm gonna take the depth to 25% and the size to 25. I'll set the angle to 90 degrees and the altitude at 85 degrees. And bringing the altitude way up like that is what makes it start to look kind of glossy. Highlight mode is gonna be linear dodge with the highlight opacity pretty subtle down at 20%. Okay, let's unsolo this layer so we can see the body layer underneath it again. And what I'm gonna do is set this layer to screen mode. We do have a side effect of the Gaussian blur where it's almost like this shadow kind of spilling off the edges, but I can clean that up with this little checkbox right next to the layers blending mode. That's the preserve transparency option. That comes in handy just every so often. And with layer style effects, even if the layer is set to screen mode, any layer style effect will still honor its own blending mode. So the bevel highlights, for example, are still showing up as linear dodge. And I actually wanna darken the center of the shapes a little bit more with another instance of the satin layer style effect. And by default, satin is an effect set to multiply, but even with a layer set to screen, it's still showing up as multiply, and I think helping the blood look a little bit thicker in the center. The one thing we're missing are some nice glossy highlights. So to create those, I'm gonna use an adjustment layer with just one effect. I'm gonna call this adjustment layer CC glass, and we'll use the CC glass effect. This effect takes a little bit of dialing in, so I'm gonna drop down all these options. So I'm gonna point the bump map at the drips composite layer, effects and masks, and I'm gonna use the alpha channel. 
softness is going to come down to 12 and height is going to come down to just four then I want really bright specular highlights. So I'm gonna crank up the light intensity to 500 and bring the light height up just a little bit to 75. And I want the light to kind of catch the bottom of the drip. So I'm gonna bring the light angle around to 200 degrees. And then in the shading section, that's where we can dial in the lighting. I'm gonna set the ambient light to 100. That basically just lets through the original color. I'll take the diffuse down to zero. That gets rid of all the extra lighting. Specular up at 100. Roughness way down at 0 0.002 for a super sharp highlight. And metal at zero. And that makes the highlight just pure white. So that is basically all of the pieces to create this effect. And once all these things are in place, this really slows down the preview and render time. But an adjustment layer with the CC force motion blur effect does do a really nice job of creating some realistic motion blur as a final detail. All right, that is our dripping blood effect. Pretty cool with text as the source, but remember we can always go back into the source comp and switch things out. So even a silhouette can look pretty awesome as the source. If you made it this far in the video, maybe you followed along and built the project. Remember, if you wanna skip all that construction time, you can always grab this project file by supporting Texture Labs on Patreon. I will link to that below. All right, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.